floor is yours. Well, thank you. First of all, I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your very busy days. I know that you have so much going on and thank you for joining Greg and I today. I think we're going to have some fun. So let's talk about what I hope you will get from this uh, workshop that we're doing today. First of all, we're going to talk about what you can do as a guest on a podcast to create income, to create more clients, to create uh, a network of people. And then also, if you happen to be a host, how can you uh, leverage that as well? So my goal when I'm a guest on a show is to provide more value for that host, not just to show up on the show as a guest and to talk about the, the stuff that I talk about, but also to provide- This is being recorded too, Mitchell. I don't think it's changed where we assess impact. It's a change to a document where you're trying to improve the clarity. Okay, somebody has a microphone on. All right. So uh, what I hope what I hope to accomplish when I'm a guest is to provide the more value. And I do that by using cast magic, and I'm going to show you exactly how I use that because when I send it to the host, literally the host will go, Oh my gosh, I don't want to spend hours having to do this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How can I do this too? And that's your my entry in. The other thing is it also creates new business opportunities because I'm not just doing this as a way to create an affiliate income for myself because, you know, quite frankly, I would have to sell and, you know, I plan on doing that thousands and thousands and thousands of accounts to, to make it an actual income on that. However, I do create business for myself. And how do I do that? I, after I send that stuff to the host and the host says, how do I do that? Well, I say, good question. Why don't we set up a time to chat? And this is not a sales call. This is for me to actually show them how to utilize that content. And invariably, I would say about 50% of those people that I talk to say, how can I do this too? Can I get this platform? Bingo, they click the link, they buy the platform. Then the second piece is, I don't know how to set this up for myself. Can you help me set this up? Now you have a client. So that's the first thing too. How can you leverage this guest appearance. So you send the content to the host. I'm going to show you how to do that, which is the promotion of the episode, which is optimized with Cast Magic, and then also understanding which assets you're going to be able to pull from the Cast Magic content. Now let's flip the switch just for a second. Let's assume you are somebody who is a host of a podcast or you'd like to have a podcast but you are already saying there's no way I have enough hours in the day to create content to promote my show. Well, you as the host, your goal is to provide your viewers with an interesting person, right, to engage with and also to hopefully maybe create new business opportunities. Well, how would you do that? Well, I'm going to show you something that I do that I get, I actually charge a fee. I use my ability to interview and the content that comes from cast magic to actually create a service of people speakers coaches business owners that need an interview piece to use as a presentation piece about themselves and i'll show you how to do that as well before we go if you have um any goals in mind as a guest or as a host or um, what you could possibly do, ask in the comments because we'll get to them and, um, you know, talk about them as well. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to take you first into cast magic. So the first thing I want to just make sure that we all understand how to do is you first have to, once you've logged into Cast Magic, is create a space. If you haven't yet created a space, let me quickly show you how to do that. Right here is the plus sign. You give your space a name. You can either have it labeled by number or by um, season or free form or however, English. You put your words in here. I always put my name because my name is spelled with a C. And invariably, every single thing that comes out of Cast Magic, if I don't do that, will be with a K. And it's just a little bit of a, you know, pain. So put your name in there if it's an unusual spelling. I also spell Cast Magic out because people spell it differently and it's incorrectly. It should be Cast Magic, all one word. Okay? And then finally, you come here into the context, and I'm going to show you how to use this in the context, no pun intended, of doing this as a podcast guest. 
So that is how you create a space. If you have questions about that, put it in the comments. But in the meantime, I'm going to go over to my Karen's podcast guesting space. So I set one up here. I'm going to show you the settings for this. It says Karen's podcast guesting. I do it by the number because there is not a season, an episode. It's just simply a number. You see I have my name in here and cast magic, and then this context prompt. Now we will give you this context as one of the deliverables afterwards, but it says, these recordings are podcast episodes where Karen Glasser is the guest and the AI content should be written in the first person for Karen. Do not mention Karen's podcast guest guesting. Refer to the podcast guest as mentioned in the recording. The spelling again is cast magic. Do not use markdown formatting and then you save it. I'm gonna show you something down here, we'll come back to it, but this is how, if you send this and when you send this out to your guests or your hosts, you can get paid. If you have not yet signed up to become an affiliate, of course you wanna go over to PartnerStack and check that out. There's a link in here that you can go do that right in here and then make sure you put your affiliate link in here so that when that share page goes out, they will be able to cookie it. That means connect it with you. Even though this little checkbox says apply link to all spaces, it doesn't always apply the link to all spaces. So I am going to suggest that you um, make sure when you set this up that your affiliate link is in there. Next thing, once you have set it up, you're going to then it will ask you what kind of prompts do you want to use? And there's all sorts of prompts in here. There are YouTube prompts. If you were going to use YouTube prompts, there are podcast prompts, there's promotion prompts, there's coaching prompts, there's course prompts. In this case, I am using the standard podcast prompts, but I have added a few extra ones at the bottom. And I am going to also provide you with those um, uh, uh, prompts. In here, you're going to see when I go and, and populate everything, I'm going to show you a follow-up email to the host that will completely merge the name of the host into the email, tells them what to do, tells them that there's going to be a video they can click on to actually watch how to get this information. I also include a follow-up with a guest if, in fact, you're a host and you want to uh, send emails to all of your guests and possibly have your guests sign up as well. And then finally, I have social posts with posts from the show because I'm going to show you how to merge that with Canva to create completely customized social media posts for your show. Do we, before we continue, are there any questions, anything that, anything that I need to address, Greg, before I move on? Yeah. So, um, uh, we'll get to this, or, but Christina's got a great question about how you get access to the audio files of the podcast in which you were a guest. So I know we're going to talk about that. Yes. So just yes. notating okay. that for you, Christina. Yes. Um, and then um, Scott was looking at what is the best, hold on, where did it just go? Um, what is the best conversion? So how do you effectively convert these people, which we'll be getting to as well? Which we're going to get to. Absolutely. Okay. So um, the, uh, well, so how do you, let's start from the top. How do you get the audio and or video link? You ask, you say to the host, I would like to be able to share the show that I just did with you. Thank you for having me on the show. And I want to support you. That's, and they obviously I'm going to give them, they're going to give me their link. I mean, they're just going to. There, I have never had somebody say, no, you can't have it. Now, if in fact it's sitting on um, YouTube, you can go get the link all by yourself. All right. Does that answer that question? I have never had a. So, so I always go with, you can get the RSS feed or the YouTube link. Those are easy. So if you right. don't want to uh, email after the, the, the host has emailed you saying, hey, it's live. You can always go ahead and just grab the YouTube link if they posted YouTube or just go find the RSS feed. RSS feed, I always like go to podnews.net. You type in the name of the show, you click the RSS link and you get it from there. Um, and as you can see from Karen's standpoint here, she's got an RSS feed in there. So you've got the YouTube one. Uh, you can go ahead and grab a, the actual um, podcast one 
if you right. don't have that. Exactly. Now, when you go to upload, if you have a YouTube link, um, that's obviously a lot easier. If you have an MP4, like at the end of this particular video, I will have an MP4 and I'm going to upload this as an MP4. Uh, it takes a little bit longer for it to upload. You can also take the audio. So there's multiple ways, the RSS feed, and if you are doing Zoom, as we all saw in the Slack board the other day, Zoom is now integrated right into Cast Magic. Thank you very much, Cast Magic. Very, very cool. So you upload your show, and then it will populate. I'm going to hide this loader. And then it will populate in your recordings. So I'm going to show you exactly what I do. I was a guest on a show on April 30th, movie reviews and more. So I took the YouTube link. The very first thing that I did was identify the speakers. If you don't identify the speakers, the AI content will only be half as good as it can be because it will not know who it's attributing the information to. So this is really, really important that you put them in. Let's say you put the speakers in and you made a mistake. You can change them. You can literally change them by clicking on them and changing them. Um, I also would make sure that you make sure that, that if they're the host, you identify them as the host. Or if you're the guest, make sure you identify yourself as the guest and you'll see why in a second. So you're gonna completely look at all the transcripts here. This is fun for your, your host that's gonna get this because they may decide to add this as a text file um, with their show that somebody would prefer to read the show rather than watch the show. You can also within here, and I'm not going to address it on this particular tutorial because there's just so much to do. You can clip things out of here using the clip. This program is designed to provide general information. Using the clip, you can clip it. You can then take it over into the studio that's in here and create social cards. And if you uploaded it as a video, you can create video clips as well. But I want to, you know, just be very honest about this is that Cast Magic is an amazing platform for creating content from your content, actually written content from your content. There are lots of platforms out there that their sole purpose is to create clips. And if you want to know about those, I'm happy to share with that at a later time. So we're going to go to AI content because this is where the magic happens. I give them selections of choices of, of titles that they can use the keywords that they can put into their YouTube or their uh, audio clip, the speaker's bio. Now you're gonna notice there were seven people on this show. So here's a speaker bio for Her Howard Wiggins. Here's a speaker bio for Barry Warrington and it goes on, vocally attached. There's a speaker bio for every single person that was on this show. Very great. And this is why I also, if I am a guest on a show that has multiple guests, you better believe I didn't just send this over to the host. I sent this to all the rest of the guests saying, hey, it was so much fun being on the show. I'll show you, show you the email with you. I thought it might be um, great to be able to give you some of this content so that you can promote it as well. They always say thank you. There's an introduction, time stamped overview. I, this is very, very powerful. You just simply copy it. Take it over to your YouTube video that you're now optimizing or whatever you're doing and paste it into the description. And when people click on these timestamps, it will take them to that place in the show, right to the place. I'm going to scroll down. These are all, there's a lot of content. This is things that people can use, their hosts can use in promoting. There's questions. There's clip finders. So for instance, um, somebody might want to use this to do a tweet, or they might want to go into the transcript and say, from 15.10 to 15.19, this is where this was. You can go grab that audio link if you want, and you can share that as well. Again, this, the purpose of this is to send the actual content that, they, that the host can use to promote their show. LinkedIn posts. This is... So important. Greg is the first person that I look to as who's utilizing Cast Magic with everything that he does. If you go look at Greg's LinkedIn posts, you will recognize a template. You're going to recognize when he says key takeaways and when he says different, you know, the different hashtags and things. Feel free to contact me. So it's all there. Newsletter. 
So you notice that I said in the context, make sure that you say the name of the show, but do not call it Karen's Podcast Guesting. Because if you don't put that context in here and you want to send this newsletter copy to your host, it's not going to work. They're going to have to edit it. The name of the show was Movies, Reviews, and More. But the first time that I ran this, and I want to show you the difference, it said this week on Podcast Promotions. It literally took the name of my um, space over here. Okay? So I'm going to uh, really encourage you to make sure that that context says add the name of the show, not the name of the space. And then finally, as we scroll down, we have tweet threads, which I think should probably say X threads at this point. And then threads by Instagram. Again, lots of content to promote the show. Outlines, more custom newsletters, and here are the follow-up emails. So at the end of the show, I take that link, I get all my content. I'm gonna click the share link and I'm gonna show you that, but in here is the email that I'm gonna send. I'm gonna copy this. Hi, Brian, thanks for having me on Movies, Reviews, and More. I enjoyed our conversation and the vibrant dialogue we had with Nancy, Rachel, Tasha, Barry, and Howard. We covered such an array of topics from technology and AI. It continues. As a follow-up, I would like to share with you the content I pulled. And then you literally would add the link to the show of the share. You will see the transcription, social media copy, newsletter, email copy, and a whole host of other content to be used. I love that it only pulls the show content and does not use outside AI to create that content. And then I have attached a short video walkthrough on how to access the content. If you'd like to see how you can use Cast Magics to create additional content for this and your other episodes, I'd be happy to help. You can find time on my calendar link here. Now, since I'm using this as a tutorial, I normally would have my actual content, my calendar link in there. I would not have to go and edit. And then, by the way, there's a seven-day option to try it for free. And then, P.S., I'd love to hear what you think about the content. Reply to let me know. Any questions about this? In the chat? Nope, you're good so far. Now, let's say you're the host, and you want to now send to all of your guests, because now you want to... Why do you want to send to your guests? Because most guests, if you're like the guests that I know, they're not going to promote unless you give them something to promote with. And it's not because they're rude. It's not because they are trying not to support you as they don't know what to do. So imagine if you can give them exactly what you want them to do that they can copy and paste. I think it makes it a whole lot easier. So here's a guest um, from the host. I enjoyed meeting you on Movies, Reviews, and more. I enjoyed the conversation as a follow-up. And again, here's the link to the show. You're going to see the transcriptions. It's basically the one that was for the host, but a little bit edited. And then there's one for every single guest that was on that show. And all I have to do is use the copy link. It will give me an entire document of everything. And then all I have to do is copy and paste it and put it into the uh, email to send out. So before I move on from that, does that make sense? Yeah. So Karen, we have a good question from Scott here. Are these yeah. templates you've made over time or built into cast magic? And so Scott, funny you should ask that. Karen actually had this as a template. And when we were working before uh, today's conversation, I'm like, Karen, you can put that as a prompt and put it into cast magic. And so yesterday, that's exactly what she exactly did. Exactly what I did. And so she was able to take what she had as a email template, load it as a prompt into cast magic. And now every recording she loads in here, that we'll email this. will now be generated for her. So, and we'll provide you with this. So we'll provide you with the, the actual context for this space. And I'll provide you with the copy that I used to put into the prompt and how I did it. So let's look at the prompt right now to see how I actually set this up. So and, you did... real quick, one other thing is Scott to that point, you can see here, it says follow up email to host. There is nothing there that says uh, preset prompt. Karen, if you scroll up uh, to, to a preset prompt, you'll see the delineation in cast magic. What are prompts that Karen's created? And yep. what are prompts that um, that uh, are preloaded in the podcast, in this case, correct, the podcast correct. profile. 
So all these things show outlines that she's showing you, but that threads, it says preset prompt. Those so, come yeah, preloaded. Yeah, and so you cannot edit those, but you can edit your own prompts that you put in here. And uh, Greg, thanks for that. So you, you'll notice the difference. One says preset and one does not. So as you're doing this, though, I also like to um, click the modify button and have it run several choices for the guests or for the hosts. And it doesn't re erase what was there. It will simply add another one. So let's let's do something here. Let's take. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's do the uh, speaker bios and I want to modify them, but I want to make them a little more casual. So if I do that, it will now run them all again. You can see it's generating and it's going to give me seven other pages because there were seven speaker bios. So if you look at this, it's now, this is now the, this is now the, uh, uh, it's a little bit casual, more casual. So you can change this, anything that you want. So once you've done this, there's some other things that I like to do in here, and that is to create Canva quotes. Would you like to learn how to do that? Let me show you how to do that. The first thing that I do is I come down to where I have in the content an actual prompt that says, hold on. Now, I sh what I should be doing right now is using the collapse all and, and just jumping to where I belong, but I'm, I'm going to do it this way because I've already down the, hold on, social posts with quotes from the show. So there are nine quotes here. I'm going to go, this is how we're going to do it. And I'm, I have a video that's already prepared, but I'm going to do it in real time right now. You find the posts, you copy the content, you open up an Excel spreadsheet let me get out of there you paste it into the expel excel spreadsheet you notice that each quote is on its own line the only other thing you have to do is you're going to save it as a csv file you cannot put this in as an xlsx it has to be saved as a csv file identify it as to what it is so that you can find it again and save it. Then you're going to go into Canva. I've already created a template here in which I'm going to merge each one of those quotes into this template. So what you do is you create your, your image, you put your paragraph, you put a text box in here as you see this, and then you go to the left-hand side and click on the button that says apps. You can see here, there's something that says bulk create. You're gonna click on the bulk create button. You can either enter the data manually, but we're not gonna do that because I just created a CSV file. I'm gonna go ahead and upload the CSV file. And then, I'm going to connect the data. There's a, a little button here that's being covered. Let me see if I can open this a little bit wider. There we go. We're going to connect the data. I'm clicking on that first one. And then I, you see it's getting ready to populate. And then I'm going to click continue. It's going to take all of them and generate literally quotes. Now I'm looking at this and I'm gonna make it a little prettier because I think this doesn't look quite the way I want it to look. I think I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. You get the idea. And then you go to the share, you download them all as one file and you now have nine clips or nine posts that you can share on social. Any questions about this? No questions coming up. So if anyone's got any questions, please put them in the chat. All right. So now I'm going to. Uh, oh, Ron's uh, getting asked, is that paid Canva or is that, could you do this with a free account? I believe this is a paid Canva account. I have a paid Canva account and I believe it's a paid service. It's a pro account. It's a pro service. But for me, it's worth it. However, 
if if you don't want to do that, and that's that's cool, that's great, then go ahead and use the studio for this and clip some of your, your content that you want to clip. All right. Ooh, hold on. We're getting some good ones here. So yeah. um seven posts, isn't that a lot for a podcast? What do you do with so much social copy with one episode? There is a great, great question. Great question. Yeah. Well, first of all, your shows should be if they're not unless you are doing something very topical, it's very important to have evergreen content. Would you agree? Stuff that can continually go out. So every time you decide to promote it, you can use a different image and you can use different images on different platforms and different quotes on different platforms. I am not suggesting you take all of them and send them all out all at one time. I mean, I suppose you couldn't put it in a carousel, but I wouldn't do that. I would take first the first one. I would use that as a, a lead into the full show. So I would take that image, I would put it over on Instagram, let's just say, the copy would say, uh, you know, the text of the quote, and then I would go and say to watch the whole show, clip in profile. Remember, Instagram, you cannot put links into the copy. If you're on Facebook, you can say click here to watch the whole show. Does that answer that question? Yeah, not- I, would even, I would even go so much to say for for um, uh, Fred and, and Christina here, the questions, but... You have to remember, uh, just because I saw your post about your recording today doesn't mean five weeks from now I saw it, right? I would remember it. Like, what is it that takes action? The other piece is, is your course should not be driving people just to listen to that recording. If we're looking at this from the guest standpoint, I want to continue to post consistently content that I got from this recording and put it out there so other people can see it. And that's the joys of being a guest on a podcast. So you've got all that content that you're able to consistently post. Right. And again, remember, we're talking about creating this to send over to the host. So they can, they're going to make the decision on how to use it. They may look at those nine, 10 quotes and say, well, I only like these two. I'm only going to use those two because that, that, that's what works for me. So again, you're sending them to the host for you as the individual. How are you going to use them? As we said, you can, you can literally, as Greg said, um, you might want to create real size so that you can put them into, um, uh, a video sort. You can do anything you want with this. I'm looking at some of these, these. Okay. The other thing is, and this is really important. So now you've been a guest on a show and let's say you've been a guest on two shows. A lot of people forget that the devil's in the follow-up. So you have just grabbed all that content. You created that email. You sent it off to the host and then out of sight, out of mind, you forget you did it. You walk away. You're not, you didn't follow up. So I'm going to encourage you to do one of the following, create a spreadsheet where you put the name of the person, the host, guest, whoever it is, their email, their, I'm, I'm reading here, their email, the name of the show that, that you were on with them or that you shared the show on with them, the date that you sent them this email, and the date, and then a, a date to follow up on, make a notification, go into your calendar, have a little tickler file that says, don't forget to call such and such. Okay, or you can do what I do, either a Trello board or a Notion board. A Notion board is how I actually produce all of my shows. It has everything and anything in there. So it's a natural place for me to go and put the content, to put the follow up, because then I have actual action items in my Notion board. If you're using Trello, same thing, create a create a list, a checklist, put the names of the people that you've sent content to. And as you follow up, you check them off or you move them to the next thing. I'm just looking here, legal considerations with reposting their content without it. There is no, uh, again, once it's on YouTube, it's on YouTube, anyone can share it. You're not saying it's yours and you're giving it to them. First of all, you're giving it to to the host as, as I'm gonna share it because I was on the show. I'm not sure when you say legal consideration, um, Scott, what, what do you, tell me what you're thinking. Just will there be any backlash um, from them around using their content of any sort, you know, I, I've, never, from them? Yeah. I've never had that happen. I'm wondering if any anybody who's on here had any a guest, a host that said, you're, I don't want you to share. I mean, I'm, I'm not, 
that's usually the point. The the that's the struggle that hosts usually have. Hence why this is valuable. Right. Most hosts are giving you like, hey, I would love for you to post and and recommend and like my show and everything else, and you're not getting any content from them. So you're in a sense now giving them the content to help them. Like now, you if you're a host, you actually want to get. And I'm reading Greg, what you actually wrote here is that. You want to, and this is just an aside, if you're a host, you should have a, a sign-off from your guest that says you're going to use their content, your content everywhere and anywhere. They're right. going to sign off on that, okay? So that's it's more important, I think, the other way around, is that you have permission to use it not just on this YouTube show or not just on your podcast, but you're going to share it maybe to Roku or Amazon Fire or wherever. You want permission from them. That's where the challenge is, not the other way around. Okay. Um, okay, uh, Fred, it's integrated. If you go into the um, settings, don't okay. worry about it. I've got them. Got it. Okay. Cool. You're good. Keep cool, going. cool. All right. Um, oh no, Miss Taichi, Mister Taichi. It's so strange. We are getting across a thing here. And there. <laughs> um. All right. So I did kind of say something in the very beginning as to how I create income for myself. I have been doing interviews since 2012 before it was like a thing. And, and I would, you know, share the shows. I would do all of this stuff. And eventually what happened is people started reaching out to me and would say, will you interview me? Cause I want to use it um, to promote myself. So I said, huh, I've just created a new product. And I've been doing this for several years now. People pay me for my interview um, ability to interview them, we talk about who they are, what they do, the whole thing. It's now a, a, um, a presentation piece. I then take it into Cast Magic. I then provide them with images out of Canva. I provide them with a copy to put in their descriptions. I give them the whole thing and they pay me a fee. And the reason why this also works so well is since I've been doing this so long, I have over 2 million views on my shows. And so they know they're also gonna leverage me my eyeballs on my shows for them. So they gladly pay, but I don't promote it as a show. I promote it as I am giving them a promotion piece that they can use to promote themselves. Again, thinking outside of the box, using cast magic as the content that is delivered to them, uh, providing more value than people ever expected to get. And you come out looking like it's a win-win. You had the, the value of meeting a very cool person that you probably will promote yourself. And that cool person now has that presentation piece. It's going to go out there and say, look, this is amazing. You should check Karen. Karen does these things. You want one like this. She's going to do one for you. All right. Questions about that? You're good. Okay. Um, I would love to do like a, a hot seat right now and start answering questions of people that, that you have, you know, in terms of uh, how to really do this. There were a lot of questions on the spreadsheet. I want to make sure that we're answering these. How do they title it for promotion, Karen? Uh, I'm not sure Sylvia's question, but question is, how do they title it for promotion? I don't understand that question. And actually, I want to show you where you go to the share tab. So hold on. I'm going to share my screen again. I realized we did not do that. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't understand that question. So let, let, let me noodle on that while I'm coming up here because I want to show you how you share that show now. So you're going to click on the share button. You can either email it to them this way. I don't. That is that is inviting them to collaborate. To collaborate. I don't want them to collaborate. So that is actually inviting them to your space and having access to your account. We want to focus on to just giving them. Yep. You want to click on publish. And then you tell them, you, you tell Cast Magic if you're going to send them the ability to use Magic Chat and you're going to send them AI content. When we were putting the content together, there was an, and I'm going to, I, I did not share, I'm going to go back in there. There's a place to deselect certain content that you do not want to share. But you take this link here, you copy it, and then you go into the email thing that we copy that we put into the, uh, uh, the prompts. You go into an email, open it up, 
You copy it, put this link, and this is what they're going to get. I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is what they get. So they have the transcript. They have the AI content. And I give the ability if they want to create some more content on top of it. Why? Because I want them to see how great this is so that they ultimately want to sign up. When they click that sign up button, it goes over to sign up. It is cookie to me. That means that if a host clicks on that link and signs up, I will get a commission on that. If you don't put your link in there, then they're going to, they can sign up. That would be awesome. But it will not be associated with you. The platform needs to know and your host needs to know because it will be cookied by putting in that link. Okay, so now let me show you how you remove some of the content if you don't want to give it to your guests. I might not do the introduction. So you see where there's a box here, display and shared link. I would deselect it. It's that easy. So you go into all of these things and decide what do you want to share with them? And then when you share, only those items will be available to share. What are the, oh, um, so I'm going to share with you uh, two uh, links. There was a question, how do you get, get how do you get on podcasts? Well, right? let's, let's take a step back. Sorry to interrupt, Karen. Um, Got some good questions here that that uh, we let we we let get away from ourselves because we're so used to this. So we talked at the top, uh, you and I, about how to change the speakers. So yes. we have a question going like, can we change speaker labels instead of uh, hosts and guests being able to do something else? So that would be great if you want to yes. show people how you can do that. Yeah, let's do it. So, so let's. I'm going to change him. I can put his name in here, but I can also decide it's, it's going to be a different guest. It's, uh, or it's the, you can put the other name in here and you can make him, let, okay, Greg, let's go to say- the speaker. Go to the speaker section. Best way to do it, everyone. Okay. Best way is uh, in the left navigation, you see a speakers. There we go. You scroll down. You've got new role. And now you have the ability to change. So Dave, hopefully that answers that question. The ability to do exactly as you're saying, mentor, mentee, coach, coachee. That's exactly what I've done. Provide the description. By doing this, your AI content is going to be leveraging that language right. as well. So instead of always referring to guests and hosts, if it's a coach, mentee, whatever, your language is going to be there. Exactly. Thanks, Greg. Uh, and then the other one was, we invariably, as you were just doing, make the mistake when we use the share page and we click invite. And it's like, oh, yeah. no, I invited the person to my space. How do you revoke that? So you can go into the team section. Uh, no, 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 you were, you were in the right spot, team of your space. And in this case, you can see Karen's the only person. But if you actually had invited someone there there's the ability for you to remove that person. Let me see if I have a, I don't think I have anything in here that has other people in it, but we'll find out. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm myself, I'm a solopreneur. <laughs> me, myself and I are the, are the ones that are in here. Um, but you could, you could then, what Greg is saying, and you're absolutely right, you do not want people to have access to your account. You want them to be able to access the content, not the account. I think that I'm glad we just taught a bunch of people about changing the speakers. Um, yeah. So this is always fun. Um, and I think, all right, Sylvia's got, so for the interview that you do that isn't associated with a show, what do they call it when they're inviting people to view the interview? For example, I appeared on blank, watch me on whatever. I think 
whatever it is that you're 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 calling it uh, or you know I think uh, the, the prompt would say um identify it's again it's only going to be able to pull content that you put in so if you didn't put into Sylvia if you did not put in the original content that had that didn't have the name of the show or didn't have the name of it will not be able to pull from it so you have to identify it has to have it in there so it's like the context of what I put in for the prompt for my stuff it, it make sure you name it the name of the show not Karen's podcast space so you need to identify it I guess we could work on a prompt that would be specifically for that, but I don't, I'm not for the inner. I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually, I wouldn't even have a show in there. It wouldn't, it, it's a, it's a preset. It's actually a set. So this is not a show. This is an interview. So it, I think the actual question is, what are you calling the interview? So I actually would say the interview. Thank you. I, I was interviewed by Karen Glasser. I'd like you to see what she says or what we say on in the interview. I, I I think this is, I haven't used it this way, so I'm not even sure how I would use a prompt for this. We got it, got it. So hopefully that helps. Uh, I think we've got every, everything's, we've, you've answered everything else. So keep going. Okay, I'm going to now give you some links because uh, several people said, well, this is great, but nobody ever asked me to be on a podcast. How do I get on a podcast? There are a couple of, of uh, places out there. I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen and then I, you will get these links as well um, to do. There's two links that I want to share with you. Let me get this floating thing out of the way. The first one is podcast. podcast hold on and once again confirm this all the assets that Karen's showing including right. these websites and this recording will all be sent out Correct. Um, to everyone that's RSVP and attended so this is called podcastguest.com forward slash directory you can it's free. You can put your name in here. You can, um, so people can find you to be a guest or you can look for shows to be a guest on. The other one, which is the one that I use more often is radio guest list.com. And this is kind of cool because it will send you options and opportunities. It's free email leads. So you can either sign up to get free guest requests, or you can sign up to request guests. This thing has been around for a long, long, long time, and it will send you a daily email saying such and such is looking for a guest. Pretty cool, huh? So we'll put these two um, links and into the uh, deliverables that you're going to get. Anything else? Uh, Rob saying matchmaker.fm is another one. Good. Okay. Well, you know what? Anybody else have? We'll add those resources as well. So I let me let me just flesh out a couple of things before before we finish. Um just by not a show of hands, because I don't think maybe you can do it. How many of, of the we have a lot of people on? How many of you are podcast hosts? that have your own podcasts. Okay, so I'm gonna strongly suggest, especially because I think most of you have past magic. I'm gonna strongly suggest at the end of every one of your shows, you drop your show into, into, the, um, into the platform and you immediately send it out to your, your guests because they will promote your shows. They will promote your shows. I mean, that's, that's, for Rob, you're, you're you know right? Would you agree? You're you're a podcast host. Those of you who have podcasts, if you have a guest and you don't give them stuff to promote, they're not going to promote. I mean, literally, my my uh, guest will get an email that has four different images. It will have copy. It will have links. It will have how to tag me. You want to make sure people tag you, guys. After that, 
I did mention that there are other platforms. If you would like to find out how to take this content, the same show and create clips, uh, you want to find out one-on-one -on -one with me, some ideas on how to use your content, go ahead and I'll put my, I'm going to put connect with Karen. I, I complimentary. Connect with Karen.com. Set up a time with me and we'll take your exact situation and we'll walk you through some things that you can do. And I probably will add some other things that you can do to even make it bigger and better. I kind of like to say, but wait, there's more because there is, there's so much more. Um, I love this stuff, guys. I think that um, the only limitation is us. It's us. So the more you more you guys come up with stuff, the more we get excited and, and the more I get excited and I want to do even more. The biggest challenge yeah. is not promoting. Yeah. Right, Fred, exactly. It is the biggest challenge. And, and the easiest way to combat that is give them something because people don't have time to create. It's not their podcast. They don't care, honestly. And that is the whole point of, of leveraging the shared link. So right. being someone who guessed, uh, it, it's fun to see how many post just give me hey your show's yeah. live here's copy in terms of the link and a um uh an image right but i don't remember what i said on your show so you want me to now to write and remember what i wrote what i said get it right and here's the share link as karen was talking about you're like great I've automated all this content and you enable the magic chat, which I don't think we talked about. Enabling the magic chat mm -hmm. now allows me as the guest going like, I don't like what Karen gave me. It's okay. I can now go into magic chat with the video that Karen sends over to me saying like, this is what cast magic is. And now I have an idea right. of like, oh, here's good copy. Nah, it sounds maybe too AI. doesn't sound right. like me. great. Let me go ahead and I understand how to prompt. I'm going to use magic chat, use the recording and come up with my own assets. But most hosts for two reasons, psychology guests don't share one. I already told my community what I, what I shared with you. Why am I going to say it again? And as we've already discussed, maybe yeah. your community hears it, but you can always repeat it. And the way you said it on someone else's show, the reason you're going on someone else's show is to get your audience to continue to know what you're doing. And the second yeah. reason is the host doesn't give you anything to do. And then more, and, and going back to the question of, well, what, you have all these same images and you're going to keep plastering those things out. First of all, if you if you post an Instagram on one day, don't post everything else on the same day. On, this, on Tuesday, go and post somewhere else. And then on Wednesday, go post somewhere because your people that are following you they're, it's it's a reminder that there, there's actually a marketing thing that says you need to have 12 touches before somebody will actually take action on what you are doing. And so if you put something in Instagram on Monday and then you go over to Pinterest on Tuesday, by the way, a great platform if you're not using it. And uh, on Wednesday, you go to LinkedIn and you're using different content, right? Because it's coming out of Cast Magic and the same image. And then you go over to YouTube and then you go over to TikTok. You now are but it's every day somebody different. And that way you are covering everything and you're touching people and they go, gee, I think I saw that. Wait a second, what does this say? And it starts to become in bed in this. Um, I, I believe um, Becky did this and talked about events and follow up on events. So I'm gonna piggyback on that because somebody asked a question about the behavior is, Christina, the behavior is the same when people get invited to speak at conferences. Yes, it's very true, but Consider you're a speaker at a conference. Imagine this. You have turned on your microphone on your iPhone and you have recorded the entire speaking thing that you just did. It goes straight into Cast Magic, into the space you have completely set up already. You open up your phone. You make sure all the content's been optimized. As you walk out the door, you give the share button, the share page, share clip to the promoter, to the producer, to whoever is in charge of that event and say, this is my speaking. You can now use this to further promote this, this event, what I did as value added. How many of you have been to events where you have the upsell $49 and you'll get all the content, right? 
And then the producer has to sit there and create all the content. Well, you just did it for them. You have now provided, I go back to the very first statement I made. Why do you do this? Provide more value. It's very unexpected. I've seen many, many comments in here saying nobody ever promotes my stuff. Nobody promotes the shows. They come on the show. You're going to put yourself in a place where people say, I don't know who this person is, but I need her. And that's what happens. Any so other questions? I, yeah, I want to touch on Scott's. This is a great one. What kind of ROI can a guest expect based on listener count and audience match? What have you seen? Wondering how much energy to invest in this channel. So I'll speak from my standpoint, Scott. Like, I don't have a show, but I love guesting. And the whole point of guesting is podcasting becomes your ultimate content workspace, mm -hmm. right? So like, I literally get all the content I need from going on someone else's show. And from an ROI standpoint, that allows me to consistently post, see Rob Durant here, sales enablement right there, social enablement. So it's all about who knows me. And so how do I take the content that I'm getting from all these shows and being able to consistently post, which goes back to, I'll take all this content and know for the next six months, I can sprinkle in little tidbits here and there of content that I've reproduced from that one. So from an ROI standpoint, it's who knows me, who knows what I have to say, and I continue to post it out there. So the ROI is going to be, you're playing the long game. You know that people will continue to find you. Stay away from what is their listener count. Most people, I mean, you shouldn't really care. Once again, it's not about focusing on just downloads and listeners. It's focusing on all the great content you are getting as a guest to repurpose and let your audience continually know so you're not sitting here struggling what content am I putting out? How do I write content? You're getting it from the conversations you're One having. One more thing. So let's say you've been a guest on a show. You send them the content. They take you up on that meeting. You're going to take one more step. You know what that host show is about. You know what their theme is. You know what they talk about. You're going to go over to YouTube. You're going to do a search. And you're going to find somebody else who's talking about that topic that has a tremendous amount of engagement, follow-up views, likes, the whole thing. You're going to take that YouTube link. You're going to take it into your Cast Magic account. You're going to run it through the same thing. And when you meet with that potential new client, you're going to say, hey, I took the liberty of finding some content from such and such who is doing something similar that you might want to see what their content looks like. You might want to take advantage of it. You just have blown their head off because they don't even know to do that. And now you've given them the ability to do that. What would you advise in terms of creating prompts for new you know, I, I actually, use, I'm not a big prompt person, to be honest. It's, it's kind of funny because I, I watch a lot of you who are so amazing at creating these prompts um, and I rob and duplicate. I use yours because they're so good. Um, but every so often, for instance, you know, Greg yesterday, as he said, he said, why do you not have this as a prompt in there? So I went and did that. I don't always think that way. So I think the answer is, is that you may not actually add new prompts. You may just say, this is really, really great. Or you may say, I'm out there looking at other people's stuff and I really wish I had had that little piece of content. And then you go back into Cast Magic and you rerun it and it literally will just repopulate. And from that point on, everything else is in there. After getting over the initial learning curve, how much time do you spend in doing all this per show or per week, just asking for an estimation only? Well, since I'm templated, I actually have a template that I use. So for everything, it takes me about 15 minutes from beginning to end. Because once you once your your set is once your space is set up, you really you already you know what you're doing. I have a checklist. I go in, I um, upload the show, I get the content, I make sure the speakers are set, I do the spelling, I I've already identified what I'm not going to share, and then I get the share button. I'm done. It's that easy. Now, if I'm going to use that content to optimize my own video, it may take an extra 10 minutes because I have to then be a little more directed. Uh, Dave, you come off. You had a question. I got you. Do you charge? All right. Uh, thanks, Greg. And uh, can, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so Greg and uh, Karen, thanks uh, to you both. I coming to calls and walking away with something that I did not even expect uh, to even come up. So uh, thank you for the time. And Karen, by the way, I have uh, a daughter who's five years old uh, who has a middle name of Karen with a C. So <laughs> there, there you go. we're up there. So there you go. Uh, we don't see that very often. Um, just a quick question, Greg. I apologize.
you because I feel like this may have come up uh, somewhere before and I'm failing to remember it, but the prompt presets, and this is maybe particularly relevant maybe for folks like me who are, you know, the sort of center of gravity is not necessarily in podcasting. I use this more as a coach and uh, consulting and sort of mentorship, that kind of stuff. Um, where I kind of want to combine some of the presets in different places, right? Like discovery or meeting summary, like, and I know that the, when you have the set your space as a certain type, it comes with the six or eight or whatever presets that are there. And then you can go into the AI page, use the sort of chat to pick other ones to tack on. But Greg, is there a way to sort of on mass change the preset uh, uh, prompts for a space because I, I feel like there used to be an easier way to do it and I'm finding it a little bit cumbersome now and I, I don't know if I'm just forgetting or if something changed. So if it is a preset that's designed by Cast Magic, you cannot manually add that to another space. You would have to type it in as your own Magic Chat uh, prompt. Uh, but if it is a prompt that you've already created in one space, you have the ability to share that across other spaces. So uh, the quintessential example is people are like, I have a podcast, but also posted on YouTube. So which channel or which space should I create for my profile podcast or YouTube best practice? I tell everyone is you've got unlimited spaces, create a space with each one of the 12 different profiles that you've got, and then look at the prompts in the left navigation for each space. And if there's prompts there, they're like, Ooh, I love this customer discovery one. And I want this in my podcast space because I think it's good. Then just write it down in a Word doc, go to your podcast space, go to Magic Chat, type in that prompt, and then save it. So there you've got it. That is the workaround right. right now, but there's no easy way to do it beyond that. My other question, I guess, sort of related, what, about, what an alternative workaround be to have the same transcription in two different spaces? And if so, would that count as one... Double minutes. Say 20 yeah. minutes. Would so that double count minutes. as 20 minutes or 40 minutes? Uh, yeah, 40 sure minutes. Duplicates. Yeah. That would be dumb. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. I mean, and that's, that's yeah. fair. But I mean, at the, at the same time, if you duplicate fonts or not fonts, prompts in the other spot, it's going to be more generations yeah. Dave, anyway. So, I mean. Yeah, yeah, Dave, I think that a lot of it is is what you set up in the beginning. So once it's set up, then it then the work is, yeah. is done. So if you already are looking at these prompts saying, God, I wish this was in here. You know, I can't. Then do the work. Just set up some time. Just open up two tabs because you can't even copy and paste um, these prompts. You can't even select and copy. Yeah, so that, that's what I've been doing. You have to literally type them in. So open up two tabs and just take some time and just do it because once it's in there, it's in there and it becomes your preset, not Cast Magic's. I'd love to have two tabs here and I got more like 200 on my screen right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thanks again, guys. At time, um, so I know there's some other questions we may not have got to, but I know most of you are all in Slack. So if you all want to go ahead, post that either in the um, uh, general or feedback, whichever channel makes the most sense. Uh, wait, I will post all this stuff. We'll be emailing you all. But thank you all for attending this first expert training. Karen, thank you for your expert uh, knowledge uh, um, and everyone for your engagement and questions. Hopefully this is incredibly useful in so many ways on how you can leverage the tool, make some money, and really start building out a business for yourself. Um, as I said, the next training is going to be in two weeks. So if any authors here have a book, it will be how to market your book using AI. Um, thank you all, and um, have a great rest of your Thursday. Bye, everyone. Connect with Karen. See ya.